This occurred in Lynn County, Iowa, where I experienced something that I cannot explain. This was years ago. I was actually selling one of my friends some weed, and I wanted to meet him in a secluded spot. I told him it would be best if we could meet at a good spot at night. Cedar Lake near the Quaker Oats plant. We decided to meet in Mohawk Park after hours and do our deal since it would be dark and when parks are closed down, it's much easier for hiding. I parked along Bluff Road and walked my happy ass into the park at night and I met my friend there. We both dressed dark as to try and be as incognito as possible and I think it worked. We did not see any police patrolling the area, so we decided to walk along the part of the park where there is a shoreline that stretches out into the Cedar River. Keep in mind there's thick brush and forest all around us on the shore and the river. We sit down, make sure we are entirely out of view, and then we have some small talk, do our deal. I tell him instead of us having us both leave at the same time, it would look awfully fishy, so I told him, why don't you go ahead in front of me and go back to your car. Then I would follow suit about 10 minutes later and walk back to my car alone. I figured this would be much safer considering if there was a patrolling officer, he wouldn't see two guys coming out of the park since that would look suspicious. I'd rather him only see one guy. I sat on the sand and watched him walk away. The night around me was quiet and there wasn't a whole lot of noise going on. I'm sitting there, giving him a good 10 minutes or so to get ahead of me before I wanted to get up and leave. About 5 minutes goes by and I began to hear some sort of sniffing sounds and it sounds like it's coming from right behind me in the brush. I turned my head and the first thing I saw was these large red eyes glaring at me. They had a dull glow to them, and I'll never forget it. This animal stepped partially out of the brush and was at least 9 feet tall, and had to be well over 500 pounds. I know this had to be factual, because I'm 6'2 myself and weigh around 250 pounds. There was enough light coming from the moon that I could unfortunately make out too many details I didn't want to see. It had long pointed ears on top of its head with little tufts of fur at the very top. Its muzzle was long and had a considerable amount of gray in its fur and all along its muzzle. It just stared intently into my soul. In the dim light I could clearly see this thing breathing, its muscles moving, its chest expanding with every breath. This was not a person in some costume. I was convinced I was staring at a real-life werewolf. Time felt as though it had entirely stopped and I was frozen standing there, only 15 feet away from this animal. It didn't move, it only continued to stare at me. Every part of my body was screaming to run away as fast as I could, but I just could not muster the courage to do so, in fear of this thing running me down and eating me alive. I slowly began to step away, back towards where me and my friend had came from, walking backwards slowly, never taking my eyes off of this animal. I made sure to walk slowly and this thing's eyes followed my every movement. It was very calculated, like it was studying my movements. I'm surprised I didn't shit myself on the spot, I was so scared. I kept stepping back more and more and after I gained about 60 or so feet from this animal, it quickly turned around back into the brush. I panicked, immediately thinking this was going to come after me through the brush and grab me. I turned around and bolted out of there as fast as I could to get back to my vehicle. I made it out of the park and got back to my car, and I never saw a cop car which is surprising, but I think it worked out in my favor. I've actually really never told anyone about what happened to me that night, not even my friend who I sold the weed to. I really struggled with it for a long time after, having horrible nightmares, sleepless nights, and anxiety. I couldn't honestly tell you if I even believed myself that I saw it for a while afterwards that it happened. 
It's taken me years to come to terms with it, and even then I don't like to think about it. How can something like this exist without the general public knowing? How come we as people aren't informed about these things? Are these really werewolves, or an animal that resembles them? We'll probably never know the true answers to any of these questions. So, a couple of days ago, my boyfriend and I were driving up his road that's in the middle of the woods, and as we turn a corner, we see a dead deer in the middle of the road. The dead deer wasn't even dead long, it looked like, and it was pretty fresh as we were coming up the road, which was weird, since there's no other cars that come up this road. Then, we saw it. Now, I'm not normally a scared person, but seeing this thing almost made me piss myself. It looked as if this thing was eating the dead deer. It had to be at least eight feet tall, very thin, and it was all black with a long muzzle and pointed ears. It ran up right in front of the car, and my boyfriend slammed on the brakes, turns to me and says, Tell me what you saw, and asked me to describe it to him as to make sure he wasn't going crazy. I did, and we sped all the way home. This all happened in about a minute, although it felt like longer. I was telling my dad about it, and he saw the exact creature years earlier at my sister's bus stop. He tried to convince my sister it was just a black dog or something, but my sister's response was, Daddy, that thing was too fast and too big to be a doggy. And all my dad could say was, I don't know. If anyone has any idea what this could be, I appreciate it. I'm very skeptical about these things, and I'm looking for a more logical explanation. I guess I'll start with the background. I'm a 33-year-old female, but this story takes place when I was a teenager, living in a suburb of Chicago. The village I lived in was quiet and middle class. We lived like a mile from the police station, and the worst crimes we had was a murder or two, and a robbery, once in a blue moon. 99% of the time, boring, and more boring. Unless you had a car, you were stuck just walking around the park at night with your friends. Kind of boring. Anyway, one night, my girlfriend and I decided to go hang out at a park with some guys at like midnight. The night was a bit windy and had a full moon. I even got a kiss that night from the boy I liked. But the night wasn't just fun and hanging out late. There's a deep forest in the park with a stream, with a playground right next to it. The same playground we went to, with swings and jungle gym columns. There's two bridges, one of the wooden ones, it's the one that everybody uses, and one bridge made of rocks that's rarely used because it is deeper in the forest over the stream, connecting the two halves of the forest park area. I'll get to the rock bridge in a minute. We hung around on the swings and chatted and just spent the evening together. I'm sitting and just looking around, talking and enjoying the peace and quiet and the moonlight. I have a full view of the forest and the dip of the earth that I know that leads to the stream. I see something moving over the dip of the earth, some dark shape. It looked like it was crawling out of the forest, an arm, then another arm. Then I see this humongous looking dog head that resembled the Doberman Pinscher's head. It pulls itself out of the ditch slash stream, a figure darker than the surrounding forest. And I'm sitting there, frozen. I think I'm seeing things. It just kind of lies there on the ground, but doesn't move. A flash of fear grips me. What if it comes this way? I look to my friends and no one notices anything. I look back and it's gone. Did it go back or somewhere? I really want to get out there and check. Then one friend asks, Did you guys hear about the urban legend of the rock bridge over the stream? Apparently, some kids or something played on the bridge and fell over and died. What a thing to say after what I saw. I didn't ask anyone anything and just pretended I didn't see a thing. But the experience stuck with me. 
I never talked about it because I must have really been my imagination. Things like that happen only in scary movies though, right? But I rarely went to the park after that. And the black thing, if you are real, I hope we never meet again. Who knows what would have happened if you would have saw me the same time I saw you. Could it have been the notorious dogman that's talked about being seen in the area? I don't know, and I'm glad I didn't find out. The following is a very true experience. I've never actually written this down before, and I don't know if anyone has experienced this too. This happened between 89 and 90, and I was about the age of four at the time. To this day, I still get chills thinking about it, and I wonder if in some way unknown, it changed me. My parents had a house in the Inland Empire of Southern California, and at the time, my brother hadn't been born yet, so I was still the only child. To give you a layout, my parents' house was a two-story house located in a cul-de-sac. On the bottom floor, there was two bedrooms, a bathroom, the living room, and the kitchen. The second floor was just the master bedroom and bath. All you could see from the street was the garage and one of the bedroom windows on the bottom floor and the window of my mom's bathroom on the second floor. To get to the front door, you had to walk along the cement pathway that ran along the side of the house. You had to pass the first bedroom that you could see from the street. Then you passed the bathroom window, and then another bedroom window, and then you would be at the front door. The backyard was beyond that point. My bedroom at the time was the bedroom next to the front door. Now for some reason, my blinds weren't completely down to the bottom of the window. There was about a six inch gap with nothing covering it. I was pretty young so I didn't really care much about it then. The bed was in the middle of the wall across from my bedroom door and to the left was the window. According to my mom, this all happened right before midnight. My mother was asleep in her room upstairs and my dad was a policeman that worked nights in another city. I was fast asleep in my room and out of nowhere, I suddenly awoke, looking up at the ceiling. I don't know what woke me up, or if I just popped awake on my own. After my eyes adjusted to the night's light of my bedroom, I sat up and started looking around my room. All of a sudden, something caught my eye at the window in the gap. First, I thought it was the streetlights reflecting on the window, but I knew for a fact there was only one streetlight, and that I was looking at two obvious glowing spots that were spaced apart as if it was an animal's face. Then I thought, is a cat looking at me? And yes, I vividly remember thinking these things, trying to debunk this at four years old. I had remembered then that my cat Chelsea's eyes would reflect at night, but this looked different than that. The cat's eyes would almost have different colors when reflecting. These were two very solid bright amber glowing eyes, looking straight at me. I just stared at them, frozen stiff, trying to make sense out of what I'm seeing. I couldn't see a face at all. The eyes were just so bright and nothing else stood out. That void or face around the eyes looked blacker than the night, but looked in the shape of a big wolf head. I thought again, well if this is a cat, how would a cat be big like a person and why would a cat stand up and stare in my room? The curiosity got to me and I went for it. I flipped my covers off, turned my little four-year-old body towards the window, and put my feet on the floor. This is the moment the creepiest thing happened, and it will forever be burned into my brain. I got off the bed and got on my knees to get a closer look at this so-called cat, when at this very moment, these pair of glowing eyes begins to slowly and steadily tilt to the side very similar to Michael Myers in Halloween. Eyes are still locked on me, not blinking once. The feeling of dread and fear shot through my body. Completely terrified, I burst into tears immediately and booked it down the hallway through the living room and up the stairs to tell my mom. Although I was going as fast as I could, it felt like it took forever. When I got to my mom, 
I was so upset. I couldn't get any words out. Tears were streaming down my face, and my mom was becoming seriously concerned at this point. She was able to calm me down just enough for me to get the words out. There, their red eyes looking at me through my window, on the bottom, stuttering and crying hard. Are you sure? My mom asked, and I just cry out yes. She didn't even go to look. She just called the police. I don't remember the time it took for them to arrive or what they said because I finally fell asleep in my mom's bed. I do remember faintly waking up to a knock on the door and my mom going to open it. The cop speaks to her and I hear her say, Okay, thank you, good night. And he shuts the door. Did they find it, Mommy? I asked half asleep. No, honey. He said they couldn't find anyone. My mom told me softly. It's okay now, just try to go back to sleep. It's safe to say that the next day, my whole window was covered. Years fast forward and I'm in middle school. Every now and then I would think about that night. Sometimes I wondered if that moment was real, if those eyes were really there, those unforgettable, amber-colored eyes. One day, a random thought came up and I asked my mom if she remembered that night. She tells me, yes, of course, why? I don't know, just wondering, I said. Then my mom proceeds to say, well, I never told you this, but when the deputy came out that night, he told me they made it a priority to get out to our house as soon as they could, because not very long before I called 911, they received another call from someone else reporting that a large dog was looking in their window and our same neighborhood. Hearing that sent chills down my spine, and to this day I wonder, what was looking at me that night? Now, this isn't a scary story, but more creepy than scary. My friend's dad's family used to live in the woods near Eureka Springs, Arkansas. My friend's uncle was the oldest of three kids, and was allowed to explore the woods on his own even though he was only about nine. One day, he came across a little cottage nestled in the woods. He knocked on the door and was greeted by two older ladies. He promptly asked for some water, as he had been exploring for hours. The ladies invited him in and gave him milk and cookies and sat down and talked with him while he pet their white cat. They talked for a while and they eventually invited him to stay for dinner and to spend the night because it was getting dark and he was a ways from home. His parents were pretty used to him being in the woods for nights without coming back, so he accepted without question. He spent the night without incident and returned home the next morning. He visited many more times over the following year, and one day they told him that to bring his parents and brothers the next time he came. So the next week, the whole family embarked on a long trek to the cottage, when they arrived, however, they found the remains of a small cottage that appeared to have been abandoned for years. Everyone was really confused as they all trusted that my friend's uncle had visited the woman many times. They had absolutely no idea what had happened or if my friend's uncle had actually been visiting anybody. What made things even creepier was that everyone heard the low growling and the distant howls from the forest and seeing moving black figures in the woodline, watching them, growling. To make things even creepier, they found out later that the area had been previously housing an Indian burial mound that was actually removed from construction many years ago. Who knows, maybe they saw an illusion of black magic. Maybe these dog creatures are in the area and used this illusion to trick him into bringing the whole family back to the area to eat but they never attacked, and to this day I'm not sure what became of it or what the area is now. All I know is, if it has anything to do with Indian burial mounds or black magic, there always seems to be a trace of evil in the area, and this was it. Okay, so I don't really know how to start the story off, but it just happened like an hour ago, and I'm still spooked. So, a bit of a preface. Me and my friend are home alone right now, and have been for a few hours. 
Every time he comes over, we go to the woods by my house, and it's normally uneventful, with some throwing rocks and breaking trees and stuff. Harmless fun. But this time, something else happened. Like I said, we're home alone and have been for a while, and while this happened, we were obviously home alone. We went outside to go to the woods, and the trip there was uneventful, but once we got there, something was off. Everything was dark, tons of trees had been knocked down, and the entire place was not like I remembered it being. We kept going in, still having our usual harmless fun, and at one point my friend turned to me and said we should go back. I looked at my phone and decided it had only been 30 minutes, and so we might as well stay longer because it'll be a few hours until anyone would want us to be home. We continued on, finding a few strange things, like an old crushed Mountain Dew can, probably 10 to 20 years old, and a toy boat which had been completely destroyed by the wind and water and other elements of nature, and was probably even older than the can. Our plan was to go further than that, than that I had ever been deeper into the woods, which isn't very hard for us because I've barely been that deep. After walking for a while, we came to a landmark I knew that was marked about the deepest I've ever been in. A while ago, when I was going far in, I came upon a bridge built on a log that had fallen over a river in the middle of the woods. However, one thing was different. There was something sitting on top of it. Whatever was on it was small and resembled the head of an animal. When we got closer and got a good view of it, it was a deer skull, pearly white and clean, sitting on the bridge, with no clue as to who put it there and where the rest of it was. Behind the river, there was a huge hill with a creepy small house on it, and while we were looking around, I heard a low, deep, guttural growl. Like it sounded so low you could feel the vibrations. I freaked out. We began to run, and from behind me, I hear my friend screaming, and I hear him running behind me. We both keep running, and once we reach the edge of the woods, we step out onto the road. As I step out onto the road, I turn around and I see this upright, German Shepherd-looking animal standing where we were. My friend and I both screamed werewolf at the same time. We bolted and we quickly made our way home, and when we got there, the garage door was wide open. Not knowing if it was left open or not, we ran inside, locking the door, checking the house, and turning the alarm on. I hope that thing didn't track our scent and follow us back to the house. So I used to hear a ton of stories about ghosts and also watch a lot of horror movies, but since I had never experienced anything paranormal, I was a guy who was like, eh. This stuff is just created by people to make money out of, and all other sorts of crap like that. Okay, let's get on to the story. One day, me and my two friends visited this spooky looking forest. Not nearby, but we managed to get there just to check it out as we love the natural atmosphere. You know, giving my lungs some adrenaline of fresh air. The time we reached there was about 7pm, when it was already getting dark, and just to let you know, there's no light source in the forest except the entrance slash exit of the area, so it was much darker and thicker than you would expect. My friend had his apple and I had my tab with a dual flash, so we decided to use them at least to see each other. An hour passed by of just having conversation and smoking cigarettes. We were sitting under a tree as it was thick enough for all of us to lay our backs on and sit and relax. We were having a good time until we started hearing a sound, like two rocks are smashing into each other, or one rock smashing on the ground again and again. We were confused. I told my friends that it must be a cat trying to climb a tree, making the weak branches fall off and making a sound like the rock thing. But it didn't stop for like three or four minutes though. Now after some minutes, it did stop for a while and we were still assuming it was an animal doing the sounds. Things went silent for a few moments. We started our conversation about the forest atmosphere being so windy and cold and staticky. 
Then apparently, a rock fell on my friend's head. Wonder how a rock can be up there on a tree? Just in a few seconds, a big branch from the tree fell on my lap, scaring the shit out of me. And once again, my friend felt like water drops falling on his neck from up in the tree. How is there still a chance of water dropping from a tree when the rainy season was already over two months ago? Now things get even more quiet, and we begin to feel like we're being stalked. Something is up in the trees watching us. Maybe multiple things, we weren't sure. We both feel eyes on us and begin to see shadows in the trees. I happen to look to my right, and up on a branch, about 30 feet up in the air, I see this hyena wolf looking hybrid son of a bitch. I don't know how else to describe it to you. It was ugly. It looked horrible. It had huge fangs that hung out of its mouth and it was crouching on a branch. But it was ridiculous because it looked so humongous and I don't know how the branch below it supported its weight. Granted it was a pretty thick branch, but still. It was easily the size of a cow, in my opinion. It started growling at us once it noticed that we noticed it. It showed us its teeth. Immediately, without any options to choose, we both decided to run out of the forest as quickly as we could, totally ignoring the whole don't ever run from predators. I'm honestly surprised it never chased us down, but maybe we had just wandered into this animal's territory. We left the forest safely and headed back to our house. I know you might not believe me, and trust me, I understand. I'm terrible at recounting what happened, but I swear this is what we experienced, and I never knew unknown animals like that existed. I'm not sure if such a thing like a wolf and hyena hybrid cross is a thing, or if that these kinds of animals live up in trees or in the forest, but it's what we experienced, and I know not to return to that area again for I feel that I may have encountered the den of these animals the further we went into the woods. Throughout the day, we take our two dogs outside to their kennels so they can get out of the house for a while and run and play. These are not small dogs. One is a black lab husky mix, and the other one is a full-blooded Staffordshire Terrier, also known as pit bulls. The kennels are placed at the edge of the yard near the wood line. These woods are large, huge enough to take a day to go hiking through. Lately, when it gets dark, the dogs seem on edge. They will bark and whine toward the house to come in. At first, I figured they just wanted to get back into the house, but now I'm thinking that they're genuinely scared. Three nights ago, when I went to get them, it was already dark. But we have a security light, so it isn't pitch black or anything. I got to the front of the first kennel and noticed that both dogs were being quiet. They always bark at me excitedly when I go to get to them, but they were dead silent. This weirded me out a little, but not to the point of being scared. I will admit that there was a certain uneasiness in the air though, something I can't explain. It kind of felt like electricity was in the air like I was about to be shocked. The longer I was there, the more uneasy I felt. I started getting the first dog, the lab, out and heard a heavy snap in the woods near the kennels. I froze, the dogs froze. By this time, I was so on edge that if somebody had spoken, I would have jumped, screamed and possibly ran. The creepy feeling in the air just kept getting thicker. The lab had her bushy tail stuffed underneath her and was whining. This didn't make me feel any better. The pit bull was far away from the woods as she can get, whimpering for me to come get her. I can only take one dog in at a time because they get too excited and will sometimes try to fight. So I avoid that at all costs. I felt so bad leaving the pity there by herself, but I had to do it. As I walked away, she barked this high-pitched whining type of bark at me that I have never heard her do before. The lab couldn't get to the house quick enough. I went back for the other one and dreaded every step as her door is right at the base of the woods. I would have to turn my back to the woods to open her door and get her out. The air felt heavy and stale with an unpleasant smell like rotting meat and wet dog as I approached the kennel. 
Another snap, and I was about ready to run for it. But I didn't want to leave my dog, who had her head down defensively facing the woods. I could barely make it. To be honest, it felt like trying to walk through water. I was terrified by the time I reached the door. I heard a heavy panting behind me as I got my dog out. She was scared too, but starting to growl from what was ever behind me. I was frozen in place. The panting continued for a minute before I heard it get louder, and I heard steps coming toward us. We both took off at the same time. A terrifying howl-like scream came out of the base of the woods, and I didn't dare look back. I just ran. My pity pulled me all the way back to the house. I got in, flipped off all the lights, and stared at the window at the woods. I could see something moving slightly, but just out of the light. It moved back and forth for about five minutes, and then disappeared. Whatever it was, was darker than night itself. It was so dark that it even stood out in the darkness as being something that was darker than the darkness itself. It took me forever to fall asleep that night because I was so scared that every little noise freaked me out. The next night, I went to go get the dogs earlier, right around dusk. I thought all was good until I was getting my pity out again. A huge snapping sound, like a tree branch had just been snapped in half, rang out. It sounded pretty far away, so I just hurriedly got my dog and started toward the house. A few steps away from the kennel, I heard something big start charging toward me from inside the woods. It sounded like it was on four legs. We ran again and it appeared to follow for so long, then retreated back. Now, every night then, I hear sounds coming out of the woods, like branches breaking, leaves or brush being stepped on and crushed, heavy panting, low growling, and sometimes an occasional howl. I am absolutely terrified. I no longer even take my dogs down. I just take them for walks during the day and make sure we were all in before dusk. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking about buying a gun, but I'm not sure it will help. Do you guys have any idea what I might be dealing with? And if so, do any of you recommend any good weapons to deal with this issue? This took place about two months ago. Me and a friend of mine were on our way driving home back from a concert. It was late at night, I want to say around 11 p.m. or later. My friend was in the passenger seat and I was driving. We were en route to another friend's house to stay the night and crash out, since him and I had lived a few towns past that and we had traveled several hundred miles for this concert. Now, on our way back to his friend's house, we had to drive through a multiple amount of roads. Part of it was the freeway, but there were quite a few back roads that we had to take. The one we took, which is when our encounter happened on, didn't have a whole lot of lights. We were driving through on a more semi-rural back road that only had a couple of lights here and there, but none at the area of road we were at. Everything was illuminated pretty well though with my headlights since I had an 09 Volkswagen Jetta and the lights in my vehicle were fairly well. We were driving along, listening to music and talking about how great the concert was, when my friend said, hey what's that in the road? And as he pointed, I looked forward and I saw this big black shape in the middle of the road. At first, I thought it might have been a dead cow because it was rather large, and it was laying right in the middle of the road. There were ditches on both sides of the road, and I don't know if there was quite enough room for me to squeeze around past it. I slowed my car down when this shape started to move as I approached it. It squirmed and moved, and as I came to a full stop, this thing stood up all the way on its two feet. My friend and I quite simply shit bricks. This thing looked like a werewolf from behind, and that's when it turned its head and looked right at us. Our headlights were right on this thing, so when it turned around, the eye shine on this thing was immense. It was almost more than an eye shine. It was like an unnatural glow of red and amber. 
I don't know what else to do to describe it to you. It was more gray and white in color, which I thought was weird. And it looked like a pretty stereotypical werewolf right off of the Hollywood movie screen. It kept its back to us for some weird reason, and just kept its head turned looking right at us. I'm not sure what that was all about, even though its head was only halfway turned to partially look at us. We sat there for about four to five seconds, and this thing was perfectly still, just staring us down with one eye. Then, out of nowhere, this thing jumps off the side of the road to the right, and off into the darkness. I've never seen an animal leap like that, or leap that far, for that matter. It didn't even seem human, even if we wanted to believe it was somebody out in a costume. But the size alone told us otherwise. Like I said, this thing was massive, and when I first saw it, I thought it was a cow. Since the headlights were on this thing for like five seconds or so, I'm only guessing because I'm not really sure. It felt like an eternity, but it was enough time for me to really take in details of this thing. The light allowed us enough visibility to see the clear muscle ripples in its flesh, that this was indeed a living animal, and this thing was extremely lean. You could see the muscle underneath its fur and how shaggy it was, but leaner on some parts like the legs and the chest and the arms. I noticed it didn't have a tail, but was more tapered off of the waist, and its legs were haunched just like a dog and it kind of hunched over with more of a mane kind of fur on the back. My friend and I just sat there in silence for a few moments once this thing jumped off the road. When he broke the silence with, What the fuck did we just see? I normally don't tell a whole lot of people about this encounter due to ridicule and I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Besides, who's going to believe me anyway? It's not like there's anybody else I know that has encountered such a weird animal like we did that night. I can tell you though, we did make it back to my other friend's house quite safely after a while, and we never said a word to him of what we experienced, but after that, that was the end of it, nothing more. And my friend and I have not spoken a word of it since, because quite frankly, there's no need to. Okay, this didn't happen to me, but a really close family friend. I went down to go visit this family friend down in Georgia. He lived in Fannin County, and so I went down there about every other year to go visit him during the summertime. We would drink a lot of beer and have good barbecues and just reconnect since we had grown up together and were fairly close. He had started his new life in Georgia with his then wife. He was more of a southern kind of guy anyway. He enjoyed more of the swampy, thick, human atmosphere than I ever could. I was a more dry heat kind of guy. Give me San Diego, Arizona, or western Texas, and I'm good. But I can't really do the southern stuff. That was all for him, pretty much. Originally, when he was where I was and he wanted to move down there, I gave him my blessings and wished him well in his career, and then he ended up meeting his wife, and next thing you know, they're married, they have a nice house, and it's a dream for them. But everything wasn't as it seemed. My friend was kind of holding something back, so to speak. When we had sat down and had our barbecue, we had usual chit-chat and small talk, and just talked about life and catching up and how things were going. I asked him about his marriage, his job, and just how life was in general. He pretty much had nothing but good things to say. However, he leaned forward and he says, can I trust you with something I need to tell you? Being a lifelong friend, I told him of course you can. He got really quiet and kind of stirred around his beer a little bit in his hand. I could tell something was wrong since I've known him for 20 plus years, I've been able to really pick up on his emotions and when things are wrong, and this was one of them. He was never a scared kind of guy or anything like that. He was pretty tough and pretty crazy, much more crazier than I. This is the type of guy that would be willing to go and grab a rattlesnake by the hands on the back of its neck to decapitate it, or strip bare naked and jump off a 50 foot cliff into a river 
no questions asked, so you could understand why I was concerned and listen to what he said closely. He told me he was driving home one night on Highway 2. To the left of him was Jack's River. He said it was pretty dark and he came around a sharp curve in the road when his headlights illuminated a very large deer in the road. This deer was a doe and he said he was surprised by how large of a doe it was, but it saw his lights and skittered off quickly to the right. He said he wasn't sure why this doe was just standing in the middle of the road, but it looked like it was spooked by something. He says he slowed down because, as you know, when one deer is around, there's always multiple to follow, so he didn't want to risk hitting a deer and damaging his truck. He said as he slowed down and waited a couple seconds for more deer to come out and follow suit, this wolf thing stepped out into the road, and it looked angry. He wasn't quite sure how to describe this weird animal. He said it looked like a deformed black bear, but was standing up on two legs. He noticed the claws first and foremost, and noticed they were black and curved and very long, and he noticed it had raccoon-like hands which he thought was weird. Then he noticed more of the face and saw it had huge fangs with razor sharp teeth supporting it. He said this thing looked pissed. He then put two and two together that whatever this animal was, was obviously about to pounce on this deer in the middle of the road. Him pulling up to the deer must have spooked the deer, therefore causing this creature to lose its meal. This thing grew more aggressive and violent by the moment gnashing and baring its teeth and growling lowly. He then proceeds to tell me that out of sheer fear, he slams on the gas to swerve around this creature. And as he does, this animal runs after his car and slashes his back left tire, causing it to go flat immediately. With his back left tire out, he's still trying to gun it as fast as he can while this animal is chasing him in its rear view. He said the weird thing was, even though it attacked his tire and blew out his back left tire, this thing was very easily able to keep up with his truck. It's like it wasn't even trying, he said. It wasn't even like it was breaking a sweat. It was just playing with him, toying with him, and eventually, after some minutes, it disappeared into the brush and the darkness. He said when he pulled up to the house, his tire was in such bad shape, he was freaking the hell out. Obviously, he couldn't tell his wife what had happened because he doesn't know or think that she could handle the real truth of what happened. So he told me that he told her that he had ran over a very sharp rock that totally decimated his back tire. He took a picture of it on his phone and then he showed me the back tire. This thing was shredded. It looked like someone took an elephant knife and just slashed his tire in one clean sweep. The man was literally driving on a bare rim and a slash tire for god knows how many miles until he got home. I kept asking him what kind of animal was it, what do you think it was, what did it look like? And he said the closest he could tell me is it just looked like some weird deformed bear, but he said it looked more like a wolf, and it looked like an alpha predator is the exact words he told me. He said whatever this thing was, was clearly hunting at night time and it was clearly going after that doe that was in the middle of the road. Obviously, he tells me he fucked up by chasing the deer off, because that was this thing's meal ticket. It acted like any aggressive, hungry predator would, but chasing his vehicle and attacking his tire? That is what's crazy to me. This happened on Lake Champlain about 15 years ago, my friend Tom and myself would rent a cabin on the lake every year since we were teenagers. We enjoyed taking the boat out as well and fishing from the tube popular area that was on the lake and behind a tube led into the backwater and swamp. There was a road that went over tube usually every night in the summer. It was packed with fishermen for fishing with catfish. My friend had to leave suddenly for a family emergency so I was going to be alone for a few days, and then he was coming back up. That night, I decided to go down to Tube and go fishing. It was a nice summer night with a breeze coming off of the lake. As I parked my truck, I noticed that the Tube fishing area was completely empty, which was rather surprising because I had actually never seen that before. 
but it was good news for me because that means I could get the best fishing spot. I set up my two poles and got nice and comfortable. Far in the distance, I could see the bridge to New York State and the lights reflecting off the lake. Adding in the nice breeze, it was perfect. I was there for about an hour and no fish were biting. I could hear a howling noise coming from behind me in the backwater swamp area. It was far away, so I thought maybe it was coyotes. As I sat on the bank, I noticed that the howling was steadily getting closer, and it sounded like multiple animals or something like that. Add in the breeze, and it was making howling sound like it was starting to spread out more and more. I still, though, was not really worried, but that changed soon after. I had been hearing these sounds for probably 20 minutes and had no cars being driven down the road since it was pitch black. Just as I thought, it couldn't get any closer or more scary. The howling was noticeably getting louder and louder and heading straight towards me, it seemed. I still did not plan on leaving, but it was getting unsettling. As the noises got much louder and really close, I really feared it was something larger, as these noises were of nothing I had ever heard. It was almost like they were surrounding me, and I would not be able to leave soon if this kept happening. At this point, I said to myself, I don't want to meet whatever is making these howling noises. As it seemed like they were only 50 yards away, I just reeled in the lines and grabbed the tackle boxes and sprinted for my truck. The worst part was where my trichomatic was parked. Was heading towards the noises. I was running so fast I opened back and threw gear in and jumped in the truck. I took off and hung a sharp right turn away and back towards cabins. I was so unnerved to drive past the cabins and over the bridge to New York after driving 20 minutes. I pulled over in a rest area and stayed there for about an hour until I could drive back to the cabins. I definitely did not sleep all that night. And I'm not sure what I heard, but thankfully, I will never go back there alone ever again. I was in my early 20s when I had finally saved up enough dough to rent a place with a few roommates whom I knew rather closely. I had just started this great job that promised a lot of races and company growth within. I wasn't making a whole lot of the time since I had just started with this company, but I made enough that allowed me to get into this sweet place that I could never ever afford, of course. I'm talking renting a place with five bedrooms, two baths, living room, family room, garage, the works. The other two dudes living there made great money, so I agreed that I would cover what I could of the rent. As I started to make more money and get raises, I would jump in and cover more. Three guys in this big house allowed for so much room. It was nice. Did I mention how nice this place was? I wanted to get into this place because it was only a 7 minute commute from where I worked versus the 35 minute drive I had before from my old apartment. You can imagine how excited I was that I got into this place. Not only was it a large house, but it had a huge field that surrounded it on all sides. The previous owner never took good care of it outside, so there was usually a ton of brush and overgrowth which always made the place look rather scruffy and unkempt. It was winter though during this time, and much of the brush and everything else was covered by a couple feet of snow, and there were just trees barely visible. I had moved in in the middle of January and it was a cold winter. It didn't take me long to get comfortable and settle in completely. Getting used to the house was pretty normal, except for what I'm about to tell you about. I had to get up for work early. I got up and got ready to go. It was a pretty normal morning routine. As I'm stepping outside the house, turning around to lock the front door, I notice something odd to the right of me large prints in the snow. I mean large. The weird thing was that these were looking to be dog prints, except they were humongous. The prints followed all the way back towards the back end of the house. Keep in mind, we're in the thick of winter. 
two feet of snow on the ground and our driveway was a little longer than usual with quiet neighbors all around us who kept to themselves. I don't even think there was any dogs around here at all. It was a pretty quiet neighborhood. It was lightly snowing so the prints were about to soon be filled in by snow. I just left it at that and went to work thinking it was going to be normal. My other two roommates worked long shifts too and wouldn't be home till much later in the evening, way after I got home. I remember getting home that evening when, getting out of my car, I see what looks like fresh prints in the snow of the same tracks I saw early in the morning. I thought to myself that there just must be some loose dog walking around. I decided to follow where they went, which again was behind the other side of the house. I followed it and they led to the one back bedroom window and then they let off past into the field. It looked like this animal was standing on two legs and looking into the window. What kind of animal does that? The prince literally just stopped at the window and then it looked like it turned around and walked off past the field into the woods. It really weirded me out. I just went inside though and forgot about it. The bedroom whose prince it was in front of was actually one of my roommates. I think it wasn't until the next day that I mentioned to him that if he noticed that there were weird dog prints outside of his window and what that was all about. He just looks at me, pale in the face. He pauses and then tells me he saw some large dog looking into his window the other night. He said it looked like a black German Shepherd. He said it was huge and that it was growling at him. I didn't believe him, but he didn't talk about it any further. I left the issue with that thinking he was crazy, and my other roommate didn't know anything about that. Things went on as normal for a while, and I did not see any more tracks, or hear anything, see anything, or sense anything. A couple few weeks go by, and again, one morning, as I'm getting into my car, about to pull away, I look straight ahead, about to go into reverse, and ahead of me, I see this large dark shape moving around behind the house. I immediately panicked and thought it was someone trying to break in. I started honking my horn over and over in hopes of scaring away this perpetrator. But instead, I see this large head pop around the corner of the house in which the shape then disappeared. I stopped honking the horn and all I remember was this large black German shepherd head with piercing yellow eyes staring me down. The head was pretty high up against the wall too, I would say at least 7 or so feet just from guesstimating. This animal must have been big. I threw the car into reverse and in fear I fled the house not knowing what I was looking at. It was snowy and icy so I knew that I couldn't fly out of the driveway, but I was fear ridden and did not know what to do so I pretty quickly got out the end of the driveway and drove off. I got home again that evening and saw more fresh prints in the snow again, but this time, knowing what I saw this morning, decided to ignore the whole thing and just hoped it would go away. I don't know what I saw earlier in that day, but obviously, this large black dog was a part of living in this house that I would have to get used to, so I just dealt with it. Things seemed to settle down again, and nothing seemed to happen for a while. Spring eventually came and I actually got a really killer job offer just a few towns away, so I ended up having to move out and move into a new place closer to where I work now. Keep in mind I never had any other experiences other than what I just relayed to you. It wasn't until about 7 months later and around October that I kept in contact on and off with the guys from the house, and eventually we ended up hanging out next in I want to say the month of October where we chit chatted and bullshitted for a little while. I asked them if anything more had happened with that house and if they knew what had become of that black dog thing. I guess the one roommate who nothing had ever happened to him and he never saw anything didn't know anything about it and didn't know what we were talking about. The other one, the one who this thing was looking in their window at him, he was even more terrified to talk about it. Apparently, this thing had stalked him every morning when he was getting up and going to work. It was also waiting for him to get home, as if it sensed him, as if it knew where he was. He said it would watch him from behind the trees. 
and sometimes it would run after his car as he was leaving the house. He said he was so spooked that he actually ended up moving out a couple months after I did. There was a newer roommate that had come in and replaced him, and this newer roommate and the older roommate had never saw, felt, or experienced anything like me and this other roommate did. Obviously, my other roommate had it worse off than I did, and for whatever reason, this weird dog seemed so drawn to him for whatever reason. Well, the plot thickens even more. Apparently, my other roommate, who this creature was drawn to, had been practicing black magic for the last five or six years of his life. It sounded more when he told me that he used to practice and hasn't been actively practicing for the last year or two. And when he had moved into this house that I had moved into shortly after, he actually had not been practicing for quite a while. But he still kept a lot of his trinkets and idols that he worshipped from time to time. I don't know anything about spirituality, nor do I claim to, but I think it's freaky that his dark past seems to have drawn in this animal of some sorts. It was 1985, and I was living outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan at the time. I was roughly 13, I think. This was in the winter, so things were freezing cold outside as it usually gets in the winter time in Michigan. The house we owned at the time had only one bedroom upstairs since it was a single story home, but had a large downstairs basement area with a bedroom. Being a teenager, you bet your sweet ass I took that bedroom. It was roughly early in the AM when I awoke to the sound of my dog growling lowly at something. This never happens ever, so even though at first I didn't think anything of it, I stirred after this went on for a few moments. Maybe somebody was in my room. I turned my head to look at my dog to see what she was growling at, and she was growling at the window, which was just outside of my room. Remember that because this is a basement area, there are no windows really except for the one main window outside my room, which is higher up on the wall, like most basements do. I believe they're called ceiling windows. Where my head was out of my pillow, my face was just out of sight of the window. But if I sat up, I could clearly see out the window. As I sat up and saw my dog facing the window, I could see what looked to be somebody in an elaborate werewolf costume staring into my window. Except something was wrong. It looked far more real than a costume ever could. It had its mouth open like it was panting. I remember seeing drool glistening in the light and drooping out of its mouth. I saw its tongue and the intensity of its eyes. The way it stared at me and my dog. I must have stared at this thing for a few minutes. I was locked in a trance, in a daze that I feel like I could not break out of. It's like it had a hold on me. I was so terrified but I couldn't move a muscle. I don't know how else to describe it. It was horrifying. I could see far more details than I ever wanted to because the outside porch light was on in the back, giving light to the much darkened area outside of the window. The detail that haunted me was how large this thing's head was. I mean, it was huge. It was like a large male lion looking into my window. I've never seen a wolf's head bigger than that before. Finally, I was able to scream and ran out of my bed and up the stairs to the house. I awoke my parents and told them what was going on. We all got up and checked the back of the house, and even though the back porch light was on illuminating the whole area, we didn't see anyone or find anyone. We're in a pretty populated neighborhood, not too far off from downtown. The police were called and they actually had to look out for somebody in a Halloween costume peeping into people's windows. It didn't look like a costume to me though. Maybe at first glance it was. What I saw that night just looked so realistic. I'm sure it wasn't a mask. I looked at it long enough to know that there was something wrong about it and that it wasn't a person just playing pretend. As the years went on, I began hearing about this whole dogman phenomenon and how Michigan seems to be the mecca for dogmen and that sort of thing. That just spooked me even more. 
even though there wasn't any snow on the ground at all. It might have just been later on in the fall, but who would be outside early in the morning when it's freezing outside, staring into people's windows for no reason? The story I want to talk to you about today is actually not me, but my father when he was just a little boy. See, him and his family used to go camping at the Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. His family would go there for fishing all weekend since it's a pretty hot recreational spot, as well as occasional camping and barbecuing and all that other stuff. My father tells me it was a pretty regular occurrence of him and his family going there, and he has a lot of fond memories growing up there. He tells me that's the lake that his father taught him how to fish, and when he was older, as a teenager, his dad first taught him about girls. He told me since he had gone there so much growing up that he never really experienced anything out of the ordinary, but there was a few times in which he would describe this tall, white-looking dog watching him. My dad recalls one time specifically when he was just eight or nine, and he had gone off into the woods to go pee. And he had looked up, and a few trees away was this white, wolf-looking head looking at him. My father said he froze right where he was, but this thing just kept staring at him from behind the tree. My dad slowly zipped up and slowly backtracked. He had told his mom and dad about it several times, but neither of them really gave him much credit or attention for that matter. He told me that there would be other times where he'd be playing in the lake and would get a really ominous feeling, like something bad was about to happen, and it would make him want to go home. There would be times he'd be sitting there not wanting to do anything because of just this overwhelming sensation that something really awful was going to happen. His parents could never understand why, and he tried to play it off like he wasn't feeling good, or that he was sick just to avoid questioning since they gave him a hard time about it earlier. A couple years later, when he was either 11 or 12, he was looking through the woods for some sticks and kindling to start a fire with back at camp, when everything around him suddenly got dead quiet. He began feeling nervous and acting strange, and he wanted to get out of there quickly, so he dropped a small pile of wood that he had in fear that something would happen, and ran back to the camp telling his dad that he wasn't able to find anything. He says a lot of the times things only really happen when he wanders off into the woods, whether it be wanting to explore, hike, use the bathroom, etc. But he had mentioned multiple times that even when he was out playing by the lake and with his family, the feeling of dread would still overtake him, but yet wouldn't seem to affect anybody else, and his parents never seemed to sense anything He's told me that he's never smelt anything weird or never really seen anything weird besides the white-looking wolf head behind the tree watching him as he went to the bathroom. Since he grew up around there, other friends he went to school with had also visited that same lake frequently and had other similar eerie experiences, but nothing necessarily more earth-shattering than what he had already experienced. When I ask him about it now, since he's an older guy, he doesn't really have much to say about it other than weird freaky stuff does go on there and he's not really sure or has an explanation for anything. He ended up going to college in a different state and never really returned home to Missouri, so he hasn't really been back since to that specific lake. But he says that he's sure that stuff still goes on as things had gone on and off the whole time he had grown up there. The last thing he shared with me about his experiences is that he thought this was really strange and it disturbed him. Him and his family went camping with the neighbors next door. The neighbors also had a dog, a Labrador. Well, during this camping trip, he believes it was a weekend camping trip since they stayed the night several days and the only times they ever stayed the night for several days was on the weekends. So... This family at night had let their dog out to go to the bathroom. They trusted their dog to come back, and she usually always did. But one night, she wandered off into the woods to go use the bathroom, and she never came back. 
The neighbors in my family thought that was weird since they were the neighbors, we were pretty familiar with their Labrador. After about 30 minutes, we decided to go out looking even though it was dusk and dark. But we couldn't get really far since we didn't really have flashlights at the time. But I remember my neighbors kept calling her name and calling her name and figured maybe she had just gotten stuck in the woods somewhere a little bit. I'm not sure. I honestly can't remember the reason why they blew it off and decided to wait till the following morning to go look for her. If it was my dog, I would be out there searching in the dark no matter what. But apparently, our neighbors weren't too terribly bothered by the fact that their dog wasn't quite responding to its name, and it had been well past 30 minutes at this point. Come the following morning, there's absolutely zero trace of the dog. They even both hike about a mile or so in the woods and can't find a thing. A little distraught and disheartened, they figure that maybe she had just ran away, or maybe some other family had gotten a hold of her and decided to take her home. There really wasn't much done about it, and I'm not really sure why, but again, being a kid, I wasn't fully aware of all of their emotions and maybe what they went through once they got back to the house. But I do find it weird that not only did the dog disappear, but that they weren't even bothered by it. Maybe they knew something. I'm not quite sure. He's also informed me that I guess there's been a few missing persons throughout the area in the last 10 or 20 years or so I've been told. With the weird activity going on in the area, I'm not quite surprised. Usually, things like this and disappearances seem to go hand in hand and it wouldn't surprise me if there was a dogman in the area that my father had ran into and experienced firsthand. It was very late at night, and I was in the process of driving home from a long East Coast road trip. I was currently in Idaho, and I couldn't tell you what road I was on at the time. This was back in 91 or 92, I think. It was right after Metallica's The Black Album had just come out. I remember that because I was blasting it in my car the whole way. I had already had multiple cups of coffee and was very easily and quickly losing my ability to stay awake at the wheel. I remember I pulled off to a sight out of the road. Now, the road I was on was only a two-lane highway and it was a little bit more off trail, so to speak. It was much more rural, I remember at the time, and there was a lot of dense forest around where I was. Anyway, as I was in the pullout, I decided I would get a few hours of shut-eye, so I turned off my car, pulled back my car seat, and lifted up my legs onto the steering wheel, and tried to sleep as best as I could. I'm sure many are wondering how I could have done this, but I'm a really short person. I'm only 5'2", so spreading out wasn't as hard as some of you might think it to be. Well, I remember I drifted off at some point, because the next thing I remember, I kept hearing this tapping on the glass. It's like if you took dog claws and began tapping the glass slightly, in weird sporadic patterns that didn't make any sense. I was drifting in and out of sleep, since it was enough to kind of wake me up somewhat, but I wasn't opening my eyes because I wasn't quite sure what it was. This went on for a couple of moments, I would guess, and eventually I opened my eyes and, in my horror, I see this massive German Shepherd looking at me through the window. Except this German Shepherd was pitch black and had amber eyes staring intently down at me. This thing had been tapping on the glass and was apparently standing on two legs. I was screaming and just kept screaming as this thing just stared at me for a moment. I've never seen an animal look so intently at me, let alone look deep into my soul like this thing's eyes did. I thought it was just some dog at first, but I could tell it wasn't just a dog. It acted so different. The way this thing moved, the way it even breathed, the way it stared into me told me that it was something unnatural. It also didn't help that this thing's face was pressed right up against the glass watching me like a trapped rat, ready to pounce and eat its prey. After maybe no more than 10 seconds, this thing pulled its face away from my driver's side window and began to walk towards the back side of my vehicle. I had no idea what was going on, 
so in sheer panic, I fumbled my car keys, stuck it in the ignition, and turned the car on, and I put that thing in drive so fast and flew out of there, you couldn't even believe it. As I pulled away quickly, I didn't even bother looking in my rearview mirror, or even my side mirrors. I didn't want to risk my brake lights illuminating what I might see. But who knows? Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe there was just a loose black German Shepherd that had amber eyes that wanted in my car for whatever reason. Although this was much larger than an average German Shepherd, if I recall. I just remember the head being humongous, and with it pressed against my driver's side window like that, it was like it was drooling over me, like it wanted me. But at the same time, the way it stared at me, it's like it wanted to tell me, telepathically, its intent was to hurt me, and it wanted me to be scared, like it wanted me to know I was powerless and could do nothing to stop it if it wanted to kill me. The sheer terror this thing invoked in me was unheard of, and I've been around many dogs in my lifetime, and never once have I had any sort of feeling of dread or pure evil like this thing let out. I don't know why it didn't just rip me out of the car and kill me right then and there, because it easily could have. Even though my car door was locked, I am sure if it was strong enough, it could have broke through the glass and make me disappear so nobody could find me, or any trace of me. Why it chose to pull its face away and walk towards the back of my car? Well, I'm not quite sure, and I have no idea what its plans were, whether they were benign or or malicious, I'm glad I pulled out of there fast enough not to find out. I don't know how many others have had similar experiences to the story I just told you, but I haven't really met anybody or talked to anybody really about this encounter, so I thought I would share it with you so you could share it with people in whom might have had a similar story happen to them. Part of me likes to look back and try to convince myself I was just so sleepless I hallucinated it or that I was on some bad trip from drugs or something, even though I wasn't even on drugs at the time of the encounter. Sometimes I think back and think that maybe it was just a deformed bear, or some angry dog, but I try to put all these pieces together and I can't just quite fit exactly what happened to me and what I experienced. The part that still gives me nightmares to this day was the tapping on the glass. It was such a light, gentle tapping like it wanted me to wake up to it, like it wanted me to know, hey, I'm here, and I can get you. you need to be scared. I feel like if it was trying to get into my car, it would have been clawing at my window, or trying hard to get in and break the window, but it didn't. It acted so calm, and it taunted me. I'll always hold that fear in me that it'll happen again. My granddaddy was bluff-charged by some sort of upright walking canine back many years ago. See, my grandfather loved to go out into the Blue Ridge Mountains and just look for antlers and any sort of things he could find. He was an avid collector of knickknacks and such, and one of his favorite pastimes was going out into the wilderness and seeing what he could find. This man had just about everything you can think of, from obsidian arrowheads to fully intact skulls of bears. It's like there was nothing this man could not find. And he would go everywhere. He would crawl into tight crevices. He would spelunk down into caves to find stuff. He would climb up to the tops of trees to get stuff even. The man was crazy, but his adventures told so many stories, and he had found so many cool things. Among all the searching, though, he has had a few strange occurrences with animals that he cannot fully explain their existence. He tells me there were a couple times that he's pretty sure he ran into Bigfoot. And the most haunting time for me was when he told me that he was bluff charged by some strange upright canine. He told me that he had come upon a small stream in which he was filling up his canteen when he had heard rustling noise about 10 to 20 feet to his right. He looked, and out behind a tree stepped this really shaggy upright canine. My grandpappy told me that he immediately felt fear and went to draw his weapon, and that this animal seemed aggressive already, 
and was watching him intently, especially his hand, since it was moving towards his weapon. He tells me he's not really sure if he stumbled upon this animal's territory or why it acted so aggressive, but he wasn't going to take any chances since he has had several close calls with moose and other large dangerous animal when he was younger. He went to draw his weapon, and this thing began charging at him. My grandfather threw down his canteen and bolted. He said he could tell right off the bat that it wasn't a full-on charge, and that it was a bluff charge, because he said he sensed that it wasn't moving near as fast as it could, but enough to drive out my grandfather out of the area like it intended to, even though it did really spook him. He always reassured me when he recounted the story that he probably just stumbled upon some unknown animal's territory and had come too far into the zone and was maybe close to females. He recounts this animal as being about as tall as he was and pretty lean and lanky. He's also pretty cautious about where he travels along the Blue Ridge Mountains now, even though this took place 30-40 years ago. Okay, I'm sharing this story in hopes of someone else having another one, and I then will have this one out in the open. I was traveling Highway 10 from the west coast to the south coast of Florida. I was with my six kids and pulling a trailer with all of my belongings and three dogs in it. I was in a big SUV, and it was around 2 in the morning. The kids were asleep, and my 13-year-old daughter was in the passenger seat to make sure I stayed awake. So, after traveling Highway 10 for three days, I decided since we reached Florida, we would cut through the state just to save some time. So, we got off Highway 10 on an off-road in hopes of getting gas and making up some time. It was along Route 27. We came to the first little gas station. It was closed. I was nervous because we needed gas, so we continued on. I told my daughter to keep an eye out for deer crossing the two-lane, deserted highway, because hitting a deer could kill us all and turn us over, due to the trailer we were pulling. We were traveling around 45 miles an hour. I remember this so clearly like it was yesterday. We had our brights on, because the road was dark and winding. A few houses were on that highway, but not many. As we came around a corner and the headlights on the road, there was a lot of blood. Fresh blood. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Where did all this blood come from? And on the side of the road was this six or seven foot tall creature, if I had to estimate height. It was on its hind legs, hunched over a dead deer eating it. It did not look up, not even when my headlights hit it. It was using its arms like a human, eating the deer. It had a very muscular body, pointed ears and a long muzzle. If you ever saw a werewolf, this was it. It had a skinnier lower body and much more lean than I would expect, but used its arms and hands just like a human would. If it looked up though, I would have died. I looked over at my daughter and we were both seeing the same thing at the same time. Tears came to my eyes instantly, and at the same time, we both freaked out and said, Werewolf. I sped up because I was scared it would run and jump on the trailer and kill my dogs. As we got about a mile away, my heart was beating so hard. My daughter and I were so freaked out. It was a werewolf. I have never been a believer in werewolves. I don't watch any werewolf movies or have any reason to make this up. And as a matter of fact, until today, I have only told a handful of people about this. This is a werewolf in Florida. Not sure of the exact town or road, but I wish I did know, so I can find out if we were the only ones to have seen this thing. I will live my life wondering. It was between Alabama to Florida, along the panhandle. I will never forget this night. My name is Angela. I am a 47-year-old female from Idaho Falls, Idaho. I grew up in Idaho, and I am an avid animal lover, especially wolves since I was very young. 
I am writing to tell you about my dogman encounter when I was around 16 or 17 years old. It would have been around 1986 or 1987. Anyway, myself and my friend, who's a female, and my other friend, who's a male, decided one night to go into our local cemetery and look for what is called the Knocking Grave and the Werewolf Grave. We found the knocking grave and discovered that it is just a loose board which vibrates back when you knock on the grave. We never found the werewolf grave, so we just chalked it up to it being a myth. We decided to go back to the car and were talking when the male and female friend of mine decided they wanted some alone time since they were a couple back then. I got out of the car and decided to walk around the cemetery by myself. It was a beautiful night with a full moon shining above. Ironic, I know. I was walking along, looking at the old gravestones and thinking how sad it was that so many people are completely forgotten after they die, when I heard a strange sound to my left. I was standing near a mausoleum, looking down into another part of the cemetery. I heard the sound again and started walking towards it. It sounded as though something was crunching on something. I stood there for a minute, listening. I immediately noticed how quiet it had gotten in the cemetery, and the hair stood up on my neck and arms. Usually, there is noise from cars or dogs barking, or crickets, or something like that, but there was nothing. I then saw a silhouette of something big and black standing a little ways away from me around 25 feet to be exact. Something told me to back away slowly and leave now, but I ignored it. I crept closer to the creature, never taking my eyes off of it. My eyes had adjusted to the darkness, and I could see very well, especially with the moonlight helping light up the night. What I saw terrified me, and also piqued my curiosity. The creature first looked like a huge wolf, but the front legs and torso were abnormally large, and the back legs were huge. It had a long furry tail behind it, just like a wolf's tail. The head was huge, and it had long pointed ears with stuffs of fur at the tips from what I could see, and it was leaning down and was eating something. The sounds I had heard was the crunching it made when it bit into whatever it was eating. I was excited because I had always wanted to see a wild wolf and I thought that's what I was looking at. I figured that maybe a wolf had escaped the zoo, which was right next door to the cemetery, and had caught a rabbit or something. I realized, though, that the zoo didn't have a wolf in it, and hadn't had one in years. That made me even more excited and curious. I stared at the creature for about a minute or so. Then I shifted my legs to get more comfortable, and I must have stepped on a twig or scuffled my feet because the creature suddenly stopped eating, looked up and turned its head my way. It then stood up on its back legs and I heard a loud pop, and that is when I realized that this was not a huge wolf. It was black and had a few brownish streaks in its fur. When it stood up, I saw its head, chest, stomach, and lower body. The shoulders and chest were massive and covered in fur that tapered down as you looked down towards the stomach and legs area. It reminded me of a bodybuilder on steroids because of how muscular it was. As it stood there, it started to sniff the air, and it stopped and stared my way. The eyes were a deep orange gold and seemed to glow in the moonlight. It looked at me, and I felt a fear grow deep within me that I had never felt before. I knew it saw me, and I knew I had made a huge mistake by not leaving when I first got that bad feeling. It felt as though everything went cold and this creature could see within my soul. It stared at me for a minute, and then it opened its mouth and it bared its teeth at me, as if it were smiling. The teeth were huge and yellowish white, and they looked very sharp, just right for ripping prey apart. It never took its eyes off me. It then lifted its arm and took one bite out of whatever it was eating. I then realized the sound I heard was it crunching bone and tearing flesh as it ate its meal. The hands were like elongated paws, and at the end of each finger 
were huge black claws that gripped the leg it was eating. I stood there watching it eat for what seemed like hours, when it could have only been a few minutes. He never took his eyes off me. The fear I felt overwhelmed me. I felt sick and I was visibly shaking, and so I did the one thing I had been taught to never do when confronted with a predator. I turned and ran as fast as I could back to the car. I didn't care. I couldn't get his eyes out of my head. And that smile. Those teeth. I could imagine it catching me and ripping me to shreds as I ran. I made it to the car, though, flung open the door and jumped in screaming for my friends to start the car and get us out of here. They asked me what was wrong, and I just yelled at them to go now. They looked at me and saw the terrified look on my face, so the car was started and we left, and I never went back to that cemetery again. Later that night, I told both of my friends what I had seen, and they both laughed at me and told me it was just my mind playing tricks on me, which made me feel hurt and that they didn't believe me. But I could hardly believe myself. I saw a werewolf, or what is referred to as a dogman, and I will never forget it.